Hey everybody, it's Jeff Olson again with Milk and Cookies Painting, and we are going to paint a happy little tree today. So sit back and relax and enjoy while we paint, or go ahead and feel free to paint along with us if you like. Come on, let's get started. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. For our colors today, we're going to be using Lamp Black, Cadmium Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, light green, this artist loft's white, and this artist loft cobalt blue. We'll go ahead and grab some of that cobalt blue. Yeah, jumping right in with that three-quarter inch brush. And you can see we've got maybe this sky portion of that. Let's get some paint on this canvas. We can work out some of the details just a little bit later. We'll get some of this blue in here. Why don't we go ahead and cover that whole top edge? Come down just a little bit over on this side and on the edge here. All right. Now it doesn't matter if we're super tidy at this point. We're just trying to get some paint on the canvas, kind of get things blocked in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off real quick. Get some of that paint off of my brush and we're going to dive right in to uh, this darker green and again we're just at this point trying to get some paint on the canvas it doesn't matter if uh, we get a little sloppy it's kind of trying to block in where things are going to live. And paint around those edges. We'll put on layers and layers so that we get a nice even finished product. Okay, here. Let's uh, go ahead and wipe some of the excess green off of there onto our paper towel. And we're going to Go ahead and jump into a little bit of this yellow ochre. I'm going to go ahead and paint that in here. Like so. It's mixing a little bit with our green, that's okay. I just want to try and not get brush strokes in it if we can possibly handle that. Go ahead and add some of this brown in here, the, or sorry, the yellow ochre. There. And then don't forget your edges. It's important to go all the way around the edges. Now I'm going real quick and just kind of sketching this in. Go ahead and take your time if you have to watch the video a couple of times just to kind of catch up with me or if I'm going too fast you might want to rewind and take a peek. That's why I love YouTube because uh, we can go back and look at things and if we're not sure on something we can look at it again. Okay I'm going to get some of this green out of my brush here and I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, ultramarine blue here to my brush I'm going to add some mountains in here before we get too far. So we're going to come up and then up here just a little bit. Just in the background. So kind of hide a little bit once we get our hill established. Make sure we come around that corner this covered. Oh. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wipe out, clean out my brush. I'm going to jump in just a tiny touch of gray or black, uh, lamp black on the corner of my brush. And then I'm going to take some of this white 
and I'm going to mix down to get kind of a medium gray. Not a whole lot of uh, black. Just a little bit goes a long way, as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of that black off of there. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and just kind of drop some clouds in here. You might be wondering why I'm painting so dark. Well, we're going to paint another layer of white on top of this, and I'd like to see what I'm doing. We always, of course, paint back to front, and each time I'm, I'm painting these clouds, I'm going to bring a little more white into my brush. So by the time we're done, it'll look like nice fluffy white clouds. Just like our old friend Bob Ross says, you can't have the dark without the light. And so you got to put a little bit of that dark in there just to have something to build on top of. There we go. Nice fluffy <laughs> black clouds. <laughs> well, that's okay. We'll, we'll let this dry a little bit bring our clouds back to where they need to be. We'll pull a little bit of that ultramarine blue in because we weren't quite dry yet. Rinse out our brush just a little bit, and then we'll go back to that straight white here. And let's add, we're kind of doing a brush stroke that's like little circles, little C shapes almost, just building on top of each other until we get a shape and a color that we like. Sometimes we get a little too much paint in our brush. So we can go ahead and get that extra off and go back for some more of that white paint in here. Looks like there's some places in here that need just a little bit more of those fluffy cloud shapes. Throw a little more white there. We might need a few layers of these clouds to get them to look just right. That's okay. Rome wasn't built in a day. And neither were its paintings. I've been to Rome and it's been few years now, but I still remember all the amazing artwork that we saw while we were there. If you have a chance, go uh, take a peek. It's a pretty amazing place. It's very inspiring. It's great to go as an art student or, or even just a lover of, of art or awesome places. Alrighty. We're going to throw just a little more white in here. I'm going to tip the canvas on the side. So we can get this corner filled in. I don't want to have a finished painting that's missing the corner. Looks like we pulled a little ultramarine blue in there. Let's get rid of that. Here. And we'll bring a little bit of that gray into the corner. And around the side. Just a little bit. There. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on a little bit. Uh, I'm going to switch down to my medium-sized brush. 
And when I say medium sized brush, the big brush I've been using is a three quarter inch brush. The medium size I've been using is a half inch brush. And then I've got a couple of little finer pointed brushes down here. I have a number six and a number three brush uh, that have a fine point on them. Sometimes you just need something to do a little finer detail. I, we've got a, a little bit of wetness on our clouds still, but I want to kind of touch up this sky. I'd like to get it to be a nice vibrant blue. I'm going to take some of that cobalt and I'm going to throw in a little bit of white and actually we'll kind of blend it in over here on our very expensive palette. So we've got kind of a nice uh, lighter, kind of babyish sort of blue from that cobalt. Then we can go ahead and just give this a second coat. Not that we didn't care about it before, but sometimes you just got to get through all that other stuff so you can get to the details. And normally you're supposed to paint back to front, dark to light, or light to dark depending on what you're painting. Sometimes I do a little bit backwards. And, you know, mistakes happen, but we can always cover those up or change those. You know, Bob Ross used to say there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. But I'm not Bob Ross, so we'll do it how we do. <laughs> I've always loved to do art, to paint and to draw. I've loved to create things out of clay and I'd love to draw with crayon and pencil and marker and just about anything else I could get my hands on. It's always been a nice uh, way to deal with any major stress that's going on in my life. And you may find that painting is super stressful, that you don't like it at all, but uh, I would say give it a chance. Um, paint a couple of things. If you're not loving it, try something different. Just a little bit more of that white on there. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this sky, the way it's coming. It's a beautiful blue. I really like this blue. It's happening. Now, got this blue kind of worked in here. And I'm going to the side just a little bit. Sorry, you can't really see that. Now. Turn it to the side so we can see what I'm doing. There. And let me just round off this little corner up here. Clouds don't really have too many corners. Some of them do. But most of the time they, they're pretty fluffy and round. Sometimes you have to go over and over and over one spot to get it to blend. That's okay. Sometimes we have to do things over and over and over again to get them right. We've given these just a few minutes to dry, the sky. We want to let that dry so that when we flip it over, like we're doing right now, so we can paint the bottom, that this sky doesn't stick to the easel. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into that uh, light green that we have here. Uh, uh, all of the colors here with the exception of the um, titanium white and the cobalt blue uh, are part of this brand called Creative Impressions that we got from uh, 
Jerry's Artorama, and I would recommend this paint. I really kind of like this uh, Creative Impressions brand. So we're going to go ahead and clean this brush off. And now our paintings, or the bottom of our painting should be dry, so we can tip it over again. And we'll start working on these uh, back hills and mountains and things like that. Um, you know, I'm not totally happy with the clouds. I think I'd like to throw a little bit more into that. But uh, let's use our clean brush. It doesn't have green in it, so we don't get green in our clouds. This uh, big brush that we used before, I cleaned out, and it should be good to go. I'm going to dunk that again and just tap it a few times to get it soft. And then we'll tap that both sides. And I'm going to add just a little bit of white into those clouds and make them nice and fluffy. There. That's looking a little bit good. Now remember, when you're painting, the more you go over a spot, the more that color that you just put on is going to blend into the color that's behind it, whether it's dry or not. So if I have a nice thick white part right here, if I keep going over that, it'll start to turn a little bit gray. And so if we want nice white colors in our clouds, we got to kind of put the paint on and then move on to our next spot. We do want a little bit of gray in these clouds, but I want them to be nice and puffy as well. Alright, let's take a quick break here real quick so that we can get this top portion to dry and then we'll go ahead and flip it over and start working on the bottom. To this ochre yellow, throw some of that ochre yellow in here. to get some of that covered and then um, once we get that all done we're gonna dip back into that light green and just cover some of the spots that we missed sometimes that first coat just doesn't quite do it or it's just a little too sloppy we need a second coat on there to make sure things are looking good Make sure their finger looking good. Finger looking good. Sounds like a KFC ad. Well, let me touch up the sides here. Make sure we've got some of this painted in. Sometimes you need to paint a little different color to get coverage. So you could add just a hair, a little tiny bit of white to this green to lighten that green up a little bit. But that white will actually help cover any of this darker color underneath. Kind of helps reset if we're to a spot that you can see a darker color underneath it. There. Let's see. I realize it's a little bit strange to paint upside down. So we're going to go ahead and take one more quick break. Let the bottom dry just a little bit. One more quick little coat here. There. 
Now we're going to let it dry and we'll come back and tip it back over and start on the details. Picked up some grain here. Sometimes you get a little green in your brush. Sometimes you get a little color that you weren't anticipating. And it happens. You can either fuss about it or just try and correct the problem as best as you can and move on. Sometimes they're correctable. Sometimes you have to wait for it to dry before you jump back in there. Since we're going to have a tree over a large portion of this cloud, I'm not super upset that we've got a little green in there. It bothers me a little bit, but not enough to, to want to fix it. Pretty happy with how that's turning out. I took just a little bit of that gray, threw a tiny, tiny touch of ultramarine blue in there, and looks like we'll bring some of that down onto this side. I'm going to repaint that mountain here in just a second. Don't you worry if I'm painting over the top of it here just a little bit. Sometimes we gotta repaint things. Just gotta get them right, remember? There. Now that our medium brush is mostly clean, we'll add a little bit of that ultramarine blue. And we'll go back over our mountain tops. We'll be a little more careful about how we put those mountain, mountains in. We want both the ultramarine and the brown to kind of blend together a little bit. And a nice color to for these mountains. I'm going to add a little more of the burnt sienna to this. Kind of a bluish brown color. And then just very carefully brush that in. Let's go ahead and snag just a little more paint and then we'll paint that side on there. Make sure that's looking good. Perfect. I'll go ahead and get myself some of this cadmium yellow on my brush. Maybe just a tiniest touch of green. Little green goes a long way. So we kind of get almost a lime green. This already is, this green here is already called light green, but we're going for an even lighter green. Some of this uh, burnt sienna got in here, but that's okay. What we're wanting here is to kind of establish where our hill starts. And that will kind of come in through here. It's going to pick up some of that in Sienna. We don't care. It's still going to look good. Make sure that wraps around the side there. The trick is trying to 
get different shades of color here. We've got quite a bit of this yellow ochre on here now. Now to go the opposite direction, we need to grab a little bit of that green and then maybe just a tiniest little corner of black. We'll start with just a little bit and maybe we need just a little bit more. Famous last words, black is really kind of a troublesome color. It's really great if uh, you have it in smaller quantities and you're mixing it in with the paint but it can be a bear if you don't get it, if you get too much in there. Okay, I've got a nice dark green here. I'm gonna go ahead and start right about here and we're gonna paint in some bushes. I'm just taking my brush from the side and just kind of doing some nice little C shapes almost, just a little uneven, but we're trying to give that feeling that there's some foliage back in here. I'm going to take a little bit more of that with just a hair more black in there. And right about in here we'll almost draw a line right there. And Bring that paint up from that line. It's kind of the tree line way back in the distance over there. And we've got a little bit more of that. So we're going to just kind of dab that on the edges there. Looks like a deep dark forest. Along the top of our ridge here, we've got some little trees. So I'm going to throw those in here. And there's one there. We'll throw one more over. Oh, right. Maybe just a couple more little ones. What the heck? Complete that tree line there. Cool. Now you're starting to see some depth as we start to push and pull color back a little bit. Um, feeling like we need a little bit of brighter green. So we'll go to, back to this light here. Just straight up light green. And we're going to bring that in a little bit. Sometimes, again, you can see those colors through. Need a little bit of a lighter color to offset some of those places and make them look real. Especially in, in the bushes and things, you'll need a little bit of this light green in here. Just to add some depth and color. Touch back into that little bit darker shade. And then just kind of dragging the brush a little bit. Just trying to give some 
definition to these old trees or back in here. Uh, you got to watch your uh, easels, especially if you're using a table easel like I am. Sometimes they try and walk away from you. So you got to get back in there and pull them back over to the table where they belong. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and check this side over here. It looks like my suspicions were right. I needed to tidy up this spot over here and work on a couple of spots on my edges. Okay. Now, uh, there looks like there's kind of a darker spot here in the corner. I'm going to just darken this out a little bit. Add some of that last little bits of dark paint on there. And what the heck, we'll put a little bit more of that. I need to mix a little more. So I've got some of that light green and just a hair. Oh, that's a lot of black. Just a little bit of black. Mix that. And, and all you have to do to mix is just pat those two paints together until they get to the color you want. If they're getting too dark, you can add a little bit of yellow to brighten that up, or you can add some white. Um, if they're getting too bright, you can add some black or uh, a blue or a darker color, even a brown, to get those down to a different level. So it looks like this tree is in front of a bunch of fields. Uh, so first, I want to kind of go ahead and finish adding in a little bit of this right here in the front just to kind of get it in there and get it going this bush here comes down and around and then I'm gonna grab and sharpen up my brush I'm gonna go ahead and make my field furrows there Looks like grapevines or something in here. Now you see as, as I've gone and done one, my brush became unsharpened, so I can go back in there and sharpen it back up again. Throw a little bit of that on there. And as they progress down this hill, they get a little closer to each other. Okay, and then about this point, he actually breaks down and it starts going the other direction. This is a different field down here at the bottom. Different colored furrows in there. Okay, now this is a little too much of the ochre yellow, so I'm going to go ahead and clean off that brush. And get some of that green out of there. And we will throw some of that straight up burnt sienna into a little bit of that yellow ochre. We're looking for kind of a nice medium brown. That's looking good. Go ahead and paint that in in between our little furrows here. You might have to go back over and tidy some of this up, but I like this kind of dirt color. It's looking nice. It was just a little too light before. When we go back in to tidy up the green, we'll use a little bit of a different color so that it uh, will pop that green. Let's go back in and sharpen our brush again. Sometimes you can get too much paint on your brush. 
and that can muddy things up. Just try things slow and steady. There, it's looking a bit better. We need to work on this ground here and get it all sorted. So when we paint over top of it, there aren't any weird spots. green there. It's okay. Let's come around this corner. out the brush again. Let's take a little bit of this light green and we'll add some cad yellow to it. A little super bright here. And the spots where we did these dark bushes come in and add some leaves to the front of those. It's so amazing what a little bit of highlight can do for a painting. I'm just kind of tapping with my brush. I haven't got a ton of paint. I have a fair amount of paint, I guess. I'm just kind of tapping with the corner, getting that to blend in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a little break and we will allow this to dry and then we'll move on to our next layer. Go ahead and add just a little bit of this ochre yellow to our hillside up here. Let me just lighten this up just a little bit here. Sometimes yellow is the answer. People think maybe more green, but sometimes yellow is just the right color to bring in. Maybe just the right consistency. We'll add some more of that down here. Just a hair more here. Oh, I don't want any of that ultramarine on my brush. Edges. There. 
pretty happy with that. Maybe we'll just mix this down just a little bit into there. And let's check this other edge. Sometimes we neglect our edge over here. Oops, a, little, a little too much paint. I'm going to put some of that back. So it matches. One more little touch up here to these uh, bushes and then we'll move on to our tree. So I've got a little bit of black on my brush. I've gone and scraped most of it off now that I put some on. We're going to grab a little bit of that green and mix it down. Maybe that was too much black to take off. There we go. Got some nice dark, dark green in there. A little green, little black. And we're going to go ahead and bring these bushes back in here just a little bit. And around that edge. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this number six brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pencil in where I want my tree to go. I'm going to use straight yellow ochre for this. I'm go ahead and pick some of that up and to sharpen a pointed brush you just kind of turn that brush as you run it through the paint. You have a nice kind of sharp edge in here. So I see that my tree kind of does this little dog leg thing, comes out there, and it kind of comes up straight over here, it thickens out a little bit. There's one little root that goes behind it. Now this first uh, kind of coat for the tree, you're going to be able to see stuff behind it, but I'm just kind of chalking in where I want this root to go. And then I'll throw my tree in here. All right, let's take a look. There's another tree that kind of comes in off to the side and it starts almost right underneath this guy right here. We'll start and he kind of comes up, comes off that edge here. Okay, got to clean my brush. Got a little bit of that dark green in there. Throw some more of that yellow ochre in. And I'm just going to kind of bring my tree in here. Kind of. Let's right about there. Again, we've got a little that darker green. You can always wait for these things to dry. Sometimes it's funner just to jump right in and see what we can do.
this one will kind of wind its way off the canvas. And these guys kind of neat out that way. Okay, I'm going to jump into a little bit of this burnt sienna and I'm going to start bringing that in to my tree. Now this is a little dark, but sometimes you have to Add a little bit of that dark so you can paint it lighter. And there. Going to get some of that paint out of there again. Gonna add some white to a little bit of this yellow ochre. Then I'm gonna start. There we go. So this white. Get rid of some of that green in the background. Pulling in too much of that dark paint. Make sure when you paint off those edges they have that same angle. doesn't quite come out as much before it goes back in. We can always adjust our 
trees just a little bit. Yeah, let's let that dry. That's really wet. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get the excess paint off of my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and jump back to our green brush, our medium sized brush, I should say our half inch brush, and go into that darker green. So that was our light green that was mixed with just a little bit of black, just so it's nice and dark. And we work our way up. I'm going to sharpen that brush and then I'm going to start over here. And just start working my way up this direction. Grab some more paint. And this method in crafting called stippling when you take your brush and you're just kind of bouncing it on the, on the canvas. Let's, get, let's mix up a little more of that darker paint here and let's get some of these outliers out here kind of pinned in a little bit. Sometimes you just got to keep mixing that paint till you get Can always add a little bit of lighter green. Okay, here. Let's go ahead and give this just a little bit more. Body. Okay. 
I'm going to sw actually switch down to my number three brush. And I'll make sure that one is good to go. We'll mix in a little bit of this burnt sienna. And then we're going to add, or start adding, I should say, some branches. Or I forget to breathe when I'm painting stuff this small. <laughs> Let's go ahead and breathe because that would be a disaster if we have a branch come down through here. adding those little branches. Up in here with some yellow ochre now. <laughs> Mixed in some white. so we can get a nice solid color here.
Okay, just a few more details in here. We'll be just about ready to call this quits. all about the little tiny details. Okay, we're gonna throw some of this dark green back over to hide just a few things. All right. Looks like we are pretty much there. One last thing we're going to do to our tree is kind of wipe off a lot of that dark paint. I'm going to add some yellow ochre. Or I'm sorry, some cadmium yellow to the tops of these just to kind of give it a nice little highlight. Not everywhere, just here and there. For the most part, we have created a nice little tiny, well it's not tiny tiny, but nice little tree drawing here. Just outlining this with just a little of that burnt sienna. The last thing I'm going to do to this guy is go ahead and sign it. So I'm going to take my little brush and tap into some of this unused white paint. And I like to paint my initials in the bottom right hand corner. You can sign these any way you wish. That's how I like to do it. Well, there you have it. Uh, I hope you had a great time painting with us today. 
and that you will continue to watch our videos. If, if you like them, uh, please give them a thumbs up, give them a like, and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to our videos. And in the comments below, tell us what you'd like to see us paint next. Uh, but uh, that's me. I'm Jeff Olson. This has been Milk and Cookies Painting, and God bless.